just providing an overview of the week. Um, I'm going to be um, providing some comments of what I'm seeking to provide with this event and boot camp and um, encourage you to take advantage of some of the resources and some of the opportunities uh, that um, I'd like to address via question and answers uh, throughout the week. Following that, we're going to be going on to the first set of sessions, uh, and we're going to be covering this morning uh, a bit of an overview for the use of system science methods, um, methods which um, deal with this, the science of the whole, science for dealing with um, systems where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, which are actually uh, a very large fraction of the the systems we interact with out there in the world and that we struggle with to set effective case management goals and effective policy. Next, I'm going to be talking about some hallmarks of a new class of data that's uh, arisen within the past decade or two, uh, which sometimes goes by the name of big data. Um, and it's a very important point, a very important element of uh, data science. Um, these are predominantly electronic data sources, um, which are characterized by the four Vs. They're high volume, that's the big and the big data. But perhaps more importantly for our purposes this week and for, and for their relationship with, with system science are the other three elements. They're high velocity, meaning data comes in very quickly over time, which has a direct analogy to to the, the view we get over time coming out of these models. They're high variety in the sense that from a given data source, often we're picking up several types of information that can be put together into a cohesive picture, much as a system science model depicts many different elements that, that make up a, a whole that's quite distinctive. Fourthly, they also frequently are subject to high veracity, meaning that um, uh, they're picking up certain types of information about the world with greater reliability than if we relied on, on uh, traditional measures alone, uh, traditional self-reporting, for example. These sorts of data sources are important um, as a backdrop for this week. And indeed, much of this afternoon, I'm going to be spending giving a peek at three particular data sources that fall into this category. I'll come back to that. But in the final part of the, of the morning, I'm going to be, and subject uh, to a bit of uh, um, schedule reworking that I did uh, last night, I'm going to be addressing some common misconceptions associated with um, what we're trying to accomplish this week, associated with the relationship uh, between uh, data science and uh, system science areas. And we're going to be talking about three primary ways in which data makes its way into our system science models. And then this afternoon, I'm going to be addressing three of those major types of big data sources that are going to follow us through this week. Um, one of them is the, it consists of data from wearable devices and smartphones, such as many of us uh, are, are carrying within this room. Data that <coughs> provides a, a picture of a person's context, a person's exposures over time, their health behaviors, but also provides avenues by asking them ecological momentary assessment, these mini questionnaires, et cetera, um, gives a picture into knowledge, attitudes, beliefs um, with respect to, uh, to health. In, in which, together with the sensors, provide evidence of health behaviors. So that's one type of information that we'll be addressing this afternoon as a source of big data for models. And it's a source of big data you'll hear featured in a number of case studies during the week. We'll be looking specifically at a platform that makes um, defining, deploying, monitoring, 
in analyzing results from <coughs> studies using wearables and, and smartphones far, far simpler than it used to be. That's the Ethica platform. And um, I'm grateful for those in the room for having sent me their login information from Ethica. And we'll be making use of that this afternoon and sharing some information from Ethica studies uh, with you and um, uh, creating studies ourselves. So that's one type of big data. Data, again, accompanied by the big Vs. It's high volume, it's high velocity, it's coming in over time. Um, in some cases, with many measurements every five minutes, it's high variety, provides all sorts of information, and it's high veracity. Next, we'll be looking at uh, information that comes in from a very different sort of data, a data source, and that concerns search behavior over time. Search behavior may seem like an odd thing to study, um, types of, 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 of searches people conduct over the internet. But it can often provide a window into uh, health information seeking on the part of individuals that provides some, some understanding of their uh, concerns, their interests um, uh, at a given time. And by tracing it over time, we get that sort of high resolution window that we can relate to our models, to our simulation models that play out over time. So we'll be taking a look at uh, search behavior as a somewhat uh, aggregate in the sense that it relates to geographic regions rather than to one person uh, and, um, uh, and uh, a little bit coarse grain temporarily every few hours if you're looking at the, um, at the finest grain level to every day at, at a higher level. And we're looking at, looking at patterns that we see in that over time and relating them to uh, the sort of things that come out of dynamic models and the need to be related to those models. And thirdly, this afternoon, we'll be talking about a different type of communication will be if you're online associated with uh, social media channels and, and particularly looking at our ability to readily gather information from self-publishing platforms such as uh, Twitter. Okay? Um, Twitter provides beyond beyond what we get in, in search data, it provides an understanding of, of messaging and people's responses to that messaging. A, a more, um, a, a, a richer perspective on their thinking and their reactions to what they hear from others. Not only in terms of, of their actual tweets, but in terms of what they retweet or in terms of what they like, et cetera. And all three of these data sources provide us a, a situated way, a way that we can relate to a particular region geographically, behavior over time relating, related to health and cognate areas. Much of the balance of the week will then be spent with techniques that can help us relate those to models. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the structure of the uh, event. Um, in terms of um, what I'm hoping to get out of it and in terms of some of these methods right now. Uh, I did uh, post uh, a, um, a set of slides for this and I'll be pointing you to those as well so that you can uh, follow along much of the presentations yourself. Okay, so uh, um, in terms of uh, orientation and resources, maybe what I'll do is just point you to um, these uh, videos, or sorry, these uh, videos and course materials up front. That will allow people to get the slides that I'm looking at right now, as well as uh, dozens of other slides. If you want to try to get connected, a student can help you, um, uh, if you if you encounter difficulties. The, the Wi-Fi the wi -Fi network of interest is Radisson Underbar Conference. Uh, there's a number of Radisson ones. This is the conference run. And the password here um, uh, befits the dignity of the uh, water body that, that comes through town, uh, the river, um, all lowercase. Um, and you encounter that need for a password not when you're first connecting with the network, but when you call up a browser. So uh, I suggest that you connect to the network now, um, get that out of the way, because we will be using it um, on occasion throughout the morning and very heavily 
this afternoon, okay? So again, it's Radisson Conference and River. Once you're connected, once you're online, you've gone through that Radisson um, a point of entry, um, then I'd like you to try to connect to this. So it's http slash slash uh, colon slash slash tinyurl.com, that's t-i-n-y-u-r-l.com, and then data and system science 2018 math. Okay, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that was the, okay, I think it's actually Matt's. I, I'm thinking that's actually a problem, excuse me, with that. Um, there, was, there was a need to, I think, uh, in the end, shorten it. Um, so it's either Matt, yeah, it's Matt. So uh, apologies for, for showing you that. I'm not sure what happened between that and the, the actual deployment. Does this work for you? By contrast, I think this one videos works fine. So the first of these points to a set of materials, you will find a folder in there called lecture slides. And one of the lecture slides says something like overview, orientation, and that's the slides I'm, I'm currently looking at. Um, I'll buy it with that. Um, with that uh, typo there. Um, and then uh, this other one points to a set of videos that are being created even as we speak here. Um, I'm recording this and hopefully all uh, future sessions. Um, and I'll be posting them throughout the day at this uh, YouTube playlist, um, which will collect the videos from the week and allow you, if you're interested, to go back and pursue, you know, how did he do that, or or um, what was that point he made in that um, in that earlier lecture, etc. So that's the course videos. Are are people able to get to that one? Okay, okay. So right now it's it's empty, um, but uh, in at, at the point of the first break, I'll I'll be uploading um, my comments here and and my first lecture. Okay. So, um, goals of the boot camp. Um, my major goals of the boot camp are, are listed as follows. Uh, the first is to lend uh, an appreciation for, for why it's important that data science and system science, which are two very rapidly growing and evolving traditions within health, be applied not as solitudes, not as totally distinct traditions, but be applied together. The argument here um, is that not only are these two traditions complementary, they are synergistic. They, they amplify each other. They, they, they work to support each other in a very strong way. More than that, ladies and gentlemen, they actually need each other to accomplish their full potential. And uh, we're going to be trying to lend an understanding of why that is. Um, why they're such perfect complements to each other within the course of the week. Again, something that's never really been articulated uh, outside these doors. Second of all, I'm going to try to provide guidance as to the roles that are properly played or, or, or most uh, efficaciously played by different techniques that can link up data science and system science. It's not merely that the two are very complementary in some philosophical sense, although I feel that's true. But more specifically, they're complementary in terms of concrete needs that they address for each other, and there are specific techniques, te technical methods that bring them together in very hard-hitting ways. Um, by which they can be used together to get garner insight that neither would have offered in isolation, where truly the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And I'm, I'm going to be trying to provide guidance as to how to best deploy these techniques. Where does one technique fit in um, uh, compared to another to accomplish this 
to secure this whole greater than the sum of the parts in terms of the combination of data science and system science. And I'm going to provide an understanding of the operation of those techniques, how they, how they work, how, despite their gnarly technical nature, really what's going on there um, that, that allows them to achieve their task. I, I won't be going into all the algorithms at a most detailed level. For those who are interested in pursuing that, I'm glad to discuss this. And the TAs who are sitting around the room can, for various topics, I'll point to different TAs who can take you through a very detailed understanding um, of how to apply these in areas of your interest. I'm going to provide resources that will aid you in applying these techniques. Um, uh, and uh, to do so, we're going to be using giving you recourse to uh, resources in the form of models, dynamic models, simulation models, in the form of code, for example, R code, um, code uh, that can be used to run PMCMC, uh, particle Markov chain Monte Carlo techniques, etc. but also resources in the form of data collection tools. As I said earlier, for smartphone-based and wearables and, and techniques based on gathering uh, search data online, we'll be giving you a set of tools that will really put you far, far ahead if, if you are interested in tapping that sort of big data for, for projects. It'll make it much easier to work with that sort of data than if you had to roll your own solution. I'm going to try to uh, try to provide some higher level orientation and, and practice related to um, combining uh, these sorts of um, these sorts of techniques and models. Um, uh, and um, it's kind of a, a repeat of the earlier thing. Um, providing some sources of, of, of big data. So there's some things that I'm not trying to accomplish in the boot camp, though, that it's important to recognize. One thing is I, I have neither the time nor the, the realistic prospect of providing a comprehensive survey of data science or system science techniques here. I could lead you know, two full semester courses easily on each of those topics, and we still wouldn't have exhausted um, uh, you know, all elements of their application. Uh, there are many techniques that we will be talking about in the course of the week, for example, from data science that um, are very exciting, cutting edge uh, techniques that um, we'll be pointing to for their use with system science. Examples would be uh, par uh, particle filtering, uh, particle MCMC, uh, hidden Markov models, but there's a wide variety of data science techniques that I have no intention to cover. Um, and, and it's not that they don't um, deserve uh, consideration for their merit in addressing certain types of questions. It's just they're not denoted for their specifically for their complementarity with system science. You can apply them in the context of, of, of problem solving that might relate to a system science problem, but they themselves won't bring the two together. The techniques I'm going to be covering are distinguished because they specifically bring together data science with system science. They, they allow us to leverage system science models in a way that, that provides insight from rich sets of data. So those are the techniques I'm providing uh, insights into from the data science side. And similarly, from system science, um, and people know. I mean, I leave boot camps on system science techniques that themselves an introduction, and it's not realistic for me to try to reproduce most of that material here. Many of you will have um, will have encountered system science techniques before. Those who have not, this morning I'm going to try to provide that exposure so you know something about where I'm coming from. Introduce three major traditions of system science. Um, talk about why we model, talk about um, the use of, of models as thinking tools and to ask what if questions, uh, their need to, to, to capture causal structures so we can reason about counterfactuals, all things that will be central to our discussions this week. But I can't, I can't provide a systematic introduction to how we do agent-based modeling here. That's a separate group.
Christine will be glad to set you up <laughs> for that one. Um, I also can't provide, although I think some people in the room would sometimes like it, detailed technical tutorials on any one method because of time constraints. I'd be glad to, to chat about that. I'd be glad to point you to coverage um, where you can get a stronger, stronger understanding of it and to point you to papers and, and uh, fine theses where this material is covered in great detail. But more to the point, you sit surrounded by, by resources in the form of, of TAs um, who can provide you uh, on, a, on a per TA basis introduction to different methods. So, so this, um, this prospect of get, getting a detailed tutorial, you may well get that if you're seeking it. I hope you get it in the course of the week, and if you don't, speak with me, and I'll try to make sure that it's facilitated. But you might not get it from my lectures in here. You might get it out here, uh, just outside, um, where you could pair up with the TA for a few hours and really get into the gnarly details of that method. You really want to understand in great detail. Um, I would like to facilitate that. I would like to make sure that anyone who really has technical questions gets them answered. But a lot of that won't go on in my lectures. It will go on outside, maybe with conversations with me or, or one of the students. Um, uh, and finally, I can't ensure that everyone who leads the, leaves the room will do so glowing with promise and facility with all these methods. Um, uh, rather, it's, it's an introduction. In my, it might be a very empowering introduction, but it will be one where you'll need to build strength, like in any, any serious endeavor, build strength to apply these techniques and uh, you may want to stay in touch with some of the TAs, stay in touch with us to, to sort of start down that journey. We'll be taking this journey this week together, but as Jeff is wont to remind us, each person ultimately must make their own journey. And, uh, and we'll be trying to make sure that we set you off in that journey in an appropriate way. Okay. Um, so I've tried to provide a set of materials on that site whose URL was, was mis, uh, misgiven um, uh, that, that will be responsive to, uh, to your needs. Um, and uh, these materials run through co a couple types that I want to talk about because we'll be coming back to them. Um, the set that are on there right now are not the final set. Um, uh, within minutes of starting the sessions, I was I was updating more of them, um, and uh, and we'll be adding to them throughout the week. One is the preliminary schedule. Um, I put the star there because it is preliminary. Um, my foremost goal here is to answer your need, to address your needs in the form of, of questions, in the form of requests. Okay, and. Because of that, I expect the schedule to evolve quite a bit. But another reason for its evolution is that through the first bunch of sessions, I imagine I'm going to be getting a better read on, on your interests and a better read on how quickly you're, you're passing through certain material or, or, or challenges that you're encountering, which will incline me to spend more time on a topic or less time on a topic. So I may be, I'd be triaging some things uh, quite likely because I say we really need to hit this more fully um, to head off some common misunderstandings or I'll be expanding on a topic um, that you request. It's very important to me that you let me know more about your interests so that, uh, so that I can expand, um, expand further on materials. And in that sense, I'm grateful for all your feedbacks on the surveys, uh, which have been uh, helpful. But um, we're going to continue to have our ear to the ground to listen to how to adjust the schedule. Friday um, is, uh, is going to be a very flexible day in terms of deploying additional material, but earlier days will also be affected in terms of shipping up. Okay, I have provided draft lecture slides for a lot of the slides, so I'd say 
few dozen maybe um, that are up there already. Those slides will also evolve. Um, Klauschwitz, I think, was said no plan survives contact with the enemy. Any folks are most definitively not the enemy. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, we will be, um, again, sensing needs and trying to be responsive to, to it. You'll also find a few models. These are system science models that I've provided that should be thought-provoking. And I want to thank some of the students here who uh, have helped um, contribute to those. Um, uh, it, there are models there that we'll be running this morning to, um, uh, to, to build some familiarity with some of uh, the topics we'll be discussing um, this week. Uh, I'm going to be placing some code there. There's actually, uh, that, that's a, a to be, to be uh, done type of work. And this, this code will be from a variety of packages, but um, uh, it'll be accumulating through the week. Uh, and uh, there's also a set of, of, of background materials that have been compiling that reference papers, um, uh, books on topics, uh, etc. And that's not yet there. I'll, I'll be placing it there. And finally, there's a set of what I call reference decks, for lack of a better, better term. I'm trying to create brief, as in a small number of slides, um, pointers or guidelines um, to, to help you um, have principles for choosing different methods. Um, when does one method fit and when does another? Rules of thumb guidelines, because even for my students, it's a little bit confusing to know, you know, when do you use particle filtering or when do you use hidden Markov models? Um, and, uh, and, you know, this provides a, a sort of an attempt to structure that discussion, say, okay, if you're looking for this and you have this circumstance, this is what you want, okay? I tried to provide that. Hopefully that will be a point of good reference in the course of the uh, of the week. So there's materials in there, and there's going to be more materials. Tell me your needs, and I'll try to provide more materials. Yeah. Um, Christine, is there a, a, a prohibition on me uh, closing the door? Uh, no, no, just that if anybody gets too warm, let us know. Okay. Okay, that's appreciate it. I'm, I'm not sure everyone down at the registration desk is as interested as those in the room. <laughs> 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 Okay. Um, so um, I mentioned the teaching assistants. I am I can't express my gratitude enough to the TAs uh, for coming down here on a snowy winter morning, perhaps before the time where most of you are normally awake. Um, <laughs> and and I know it's not easy uh, to get down to this corner of the city from the university. So thank you very very much. Um, and uh, thank you for the big contributions you are making in the course of this, uh, this boot camp. Uh, the TAs will be central to delivery of this boot camp in a number of ways. Um, the first is through case studies. Um, uh, the material that we're talking about here is not theoretic. Um, uh, the, uh, the combination of data science and system science um, is a uh, it is not merely a, a spectator sport for the uh, TAs. It's a performative art, and uh, the TAs uh, within this room have taken the combination of data sciences, system science, uh, to new levels in in some of their work, um, and that's to be honored in a set of case studies, uh, case studies that have helped me learn that have helped them learn, and that hopefully will help you learn about how these techniques can be applied. They're also going to be aimed at, 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 at assisting, this is one of the most important uh, roles is to help you, help answer your ad hoc questions. So if, if, if there's something, when there's something, I say, that's not clear, um, uh, just make sure you grab TAs and can ask them these questions. Uh, um, and uh, hopefully uh, they'll, uh, they'll be able to clarify it on the spot, otherwise they can ask me um, additionally. Um, along the same lines, 
<clears throat> if um, if you see a TA presenting a case study or you see me presenting a model <clears throat> and you say that was weird um, you know uh, what was that um, I, I, I want to know I didn't I didn't quite get that point how did the model do that um, uh, they can help help you figure out what's going on in that model walk you through it um, walk you through the different pieces that make up a model and talk with you about how it works etc okay so these this include these sort of uh, models and, and case studies so it's very important that you not leave that opportunity to waste if there's something you see that's going on grab any TA and if they can't if they can't explicate it themselves they can point to another TA who can you know they say um, uh, you know, go uh, go talk with her. Uh, she's she's the lead on that sort of work, or what have you. Um, and this boot camp, um, as I said, it's the first time I've offered it, and uh, and I was thinking about whether to combine it, as I am wont with other events, with what we call an incubator, sort of a, a time where we try to grow participant projects, um, try to help them. Um, get conceptualized, take them to the stage where we're thinking about what needs to be in them, we formulate it, and we work towards a, a full featured model. Um, and there's, th there really wasn't the time or prospect for doing that. Um, it may be a separate event. But it's very important to me that if you have interest in applying this work in some particular area, or you have an inkling of maybe how you could apply it, or, or some question, could you apply it? It's very important to me that in the course of this week, you get a clear um, set of, of guidance on that question. Now, some of that might be in discussion with me, <laughs> but I hope that a lot of that will be in discussion with the TAs who surround us. Um, and uh, so I'd, I'd like to encourage you to say, look, I've got this problem. Is that a good fit for this method we just saw? Um, would it be better to do it in this other way? Or, or, or how would you approach it? Um, and once again, the TAs should be encouraged to grab other people in to answer those questions more fully. So please be encouraged to make sure that if you have an idea and you're wondering about these things, by the end of the book, you have a much better idea of how to go about it in a savvy fashion. <coughs> what approach you might take that would be most fruitful, etc. This boot camp is unique. I mentioned to you it's never been given before. It's never been given before by me. It, it, to my knowledge, um, nothing like it has been given by anyone else anywhere in the world. <laughs> Um, and it's, um, it's uh, a, a reflection of our context. Um, there's a number of ways in which um, the, there, there's cross-weaving of themes here. We're talking about system science and data science, but data science itself um, being a, a collection of, of, of methods and principles and guidelines and, and, and processes and tools on mechanisms to allow us to gain insight from data. Um, that, that area itself, we're going to be talking about sort of the big data sources in it, and we're going to be talking about uh, uh, methods, um, often computational statistics and machine learning methods, that, um, uh, that, that uh, link in with, with uh, system science. And, uh, there's a set of interweaving sort of themes that you'll be hearing. So one is the relationship of dynamic complexity in data science. Okay, now that's a multiple. Um, when I'm talking about dynamic complexity, I'm talking about, about the fact that many systems out there in the world, and specifically the systems that give us the most trouble in dealing with, are what we call at a technical level dynamically complex. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. We can't any more than we can chop up an elephant into pieces and expect it to behave like a, you know, like the elephant in each of those pieces. We can't reduce the elephant just to its pieces to understand it. Um, so it is with many systems. We, um, 
we, 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 we have to understand the pieces, but the whole is different than the pieces. And, it, and we often get smacked on the head because we don't fully understand that. For decades, indeed for over a century now in the health sphere, we've been working with um, tools to help us manage dynamic complexity, dating back formally to the work of Ross in malaria in 1916 and the subsequent work of Kermit McHendrick and infectious disease and building on from there. So dynamic complexity is a big feature of the world around us and it's the feature of the world around us that makes it hardest often to undertake action that's effective. Mm -hmm. To put it in Jeff's words, to put in place fixes that stay fixed. And, and yet, it's dealt with by a different set of scientists, a different set of, of, of techniques and processes that have traditionally been ascendant within the data science area. And how we, how we conduct data science to address dynamic complexity most effectively is one of the foremost questions that I'm hoping to address in this boot camp. Because if we don't undertake it in a way that addresses dynamic complexity, a lot of the solutions coming out of data science, though best intentioned, will fall flat. I can say that as a, as a system scientist and as a data scientist. At the same time, we're going to be addressing this, this undercurrent, this, um, this subtext that goes on within the data science area um, that has to do with its relationship, and I will say um, uneasy relationship, or uncertain relationship with theory. So there's an idea out there that um, you know, we're going through a transformative revolution um, when it comes to how science is conducted. Having passed through several past eras of science, more recently computational science, and now we're into the data science area where there's a deluge of of data that's going to help orient us and ground us and, 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 and allow us to establish um, understanding that's been elusive because of the ability to measure so many things. But there's an important question that people have raised and a variety of answers have been given. How does this relate to theory? How does it relate to the fact that Often when we're working in areas, we have some pre-existing theory about what's going on in the world. And how does that theory relate to observations? This is, a, of course, an age-old question in science uh, as a whole. But data science, um, uh, with giving reference to this wave of, of new types of information coming in, some have, have uh, argued in a millennialist way that data science is basically about... Um, about eliminating the need for theory, about putting theory, uh, putting theory uh, behind us um, and operating uh, as it's sometimes claimed in a theory-free way. Um, I will tell you my biases. I believe that's wholly mistaken. I believe it is gravely mistaken. And I believe that, in fact, data science used properly um, it is often best focused on explicating theory, inform theory, building theory, and yes, also capturing empirical regularities that currently lack theoretical foundation in a useful way. But it's not aimed in a millennialist way in saying theory is dead, let us move beyond theory, which, which is what you'll hear sometimes some voices in heady moments claim. So we're going to be talking about theory and data science. Why? why? Why talk about this in this context? Because ladies and gentlemen, so much of system science is basically about capturing theory in an operational way in models. It's capturing theory about mechanisms in the world, positing how things are working out there in the world in a form of an agent-based model or system dynamics model, for example. And and, and capturing it in a way that's operationalizable in the sense that we can put our assumptions into there and, and, and see what the, con the logical consequences are and test if those are consistent with the evidence as, as pointed out to us through data science. Um, system science is all about theory. And when people talk about the relationship between theory and data science, it also 
draws a boundary around, to a degree, the relationship between system science and data science. So this is going to be a big topic. And I'm hoping to enrich there an appreciation for how data science relates to theory, because there's, there's uh, a need to, to make sure that its implications are more broadly um, construed than simply, you know, it makes theory unnecessary. Um, along with that is a notion of, okay, uh, machine learning, the techniques we're applying in the course of the, the week are going to draw heavily from a, a, a set of, of, of fast-growing techniques uh, that are often referred to as machine learning techniques, um, and subsets referred to as computational statistics techniques, that I've heard some practitioners describe as they're, they're properly about curve fitting. They're basically about fitting data from the world, fitting patterns. And I think there's a role there for that, um, for, for, for capturing things um, in, a, in patterns in a, in a sophisticated way that, that is not reducible to a, 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 a simple traditional equation. But at the same time, machine learning is much more than that. And machine learning, as we'll see, will richly inform our models capturing theory with, with data science. Along with this is the need to conduct data science and machine learning um, in a way that is robust to counterfactuals. Um, last night I was at, at, at around 3 to 4 a.m. Um, I was uh, troubled by a series of knocks at my door upstairs, and um, knock, 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 in sort of a uh, Edgar Allan Poe sort of way. And, um, and they were looking for Greg, who, who was a person of, of uncertain, um, uh, uncertain character. But, uh, but I, uh, uh, th they were very persistent in, in knocking over a period of time um, looking for Greg. And I thought I'd just heard knocking here. but. <laughs> At least they're not asking for Greg. Um, okay, um, so machine learning, ladies and gentlemen, as it's traditionally been construed, um, uh, is is it's largely about making use of, of data we've we've observed um, to to gather insight, and it's a tremendously powerful set of techniques. Um, but what we're dealing with in this boot camp. Is, is trying to conduct it in a way that makes it not backwards looking, but forwards looking. And, and I'll, I'll just give briefly a, a guide to those, what I mean by those terms. Um, when we're dealing with data we've collected from the past, that data is uh, indicative of, of uh, associations um, relationships, um, correlations that, that have been observed uh, thus far. And um, those often will provide us uh, a great deal of, of, of insight as to what's associated with what, what goes together. But often when we're dealing with system science, and we're dealing with the challenges of complexity, our interest is in, is in intervention. It's in bending the curve for the better. It's in making a difference, whether it's at a level, an operational level of, of managing a, a person, at, at say, say a, a, a youth um, who's uh, under, under protection and at risk, um, or, or a person who's uh, at, at risk of suicidal ideation, or whether it's at a policy level. We're often interested in knowing how can we, how can we do better? How can we change things for the better? Bobby Milstein has, has commented about public health as, as, um, as uh, you know, focusing on, on health improvements. And, and there, you know, we're, we're interested in interventions which often haven't been observed before. We're interested in counterfactuals, things that haven't yet taken place. And we want to know which of these actions that we might undertake could improve things most effectively. And that requires looking at more than data about the past. Because often we won't have 
data about how things will change if we put in place a new regimen, a new, a new type of, um, of uh, help for this young person at risk, or a new policy. We don't have data that directly alerts me to what's likely to change. And this is where system science comes in and where machine learning can still help us as we change the term as the data generating process. We alter the process that's giving rise to this data over time and we want to understand are we headed in the right direction. We want to inform our models and machine learning plays a big role in that way too. Forwards looking, not merely backwards looking. Not merely operating on data out of the past from a situation which has now changed because of an intervention, but as a way to look forward into guidance. Um, and, uh, and finally, um, you know, we're going to be central to this is to talk about the complementary roles and synergistic and even cross needed roles of big data machine learning on the one hand and, and system science on the other. Okay. Um, so uh, I mentioned the focus of, of data science is, is addressing mechanisms, processes, principles, and practices and methodologies for drawing insight from data. This is a big topic. It, it, it relates to scalable computational methods and storage of large volumes of data and storage of that data in a privacy-preserving way and ways of effectively analyzing that data and visualizing that data to capture, to capture insight. Um, we're going to be talking about this in two particular ways. One is the use of, of big data, um, these techniques recommended by the four Vs, again, volume, velocity, variety, and veracity. But we're also going to be uh, talking about this because it, drawing insight from data often draws very centrally on, on machine learning and, and, and computational statistics methods that will form the focus of our um, and, you know, there's an aspiration in data science. If you read more broadly about it, there's an aspiration in data science to use this, this new ascendant world of, of measurability to, 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 to quantify things around us, to, to, to get data where, where it's been lacking previously, to really under, not only generally draw insights, but to understand the richness of how the world works, of, of the processes in the world. And I would argue that it's particularly there that system science comes in. Because system science is all about reasoning what's going on in the world. What are the underlying processes? What are the mechanisms by which the world is working? And data science, in as much as it aspires to inform this, is really talking about informing and working with System science. System science it, uh, often goes by the name of complexity science. I know is is familiar to many of you at some level, but also totally unfamiliar to others. We refer to system science as the science of the whole. That, that's my term for it because it deals with these systems where the whole is different than the sum of the parts, informally where it's greater than. And I referred earlier to the analogy of living systems, right? The elephant. It's, it's not merely a collection of legs and trunks and, and, um, and ears, um, but uh, it's, it's something about how they all fit together and work together. That, that's the relevant thing if you're trying to train, train that elephant. Um, uh, so System science is focused on characterizing, analyzing, reasoning about, and managing complex systems. These systems which often exhibit surprising behavior. They surprise us by their reaction to it because of a variety of characteristics, some of which are codified in, in um, one of those sets of slides I've given you. Um, and the central mode for, for dealing with these systems our a central mode is, is to understand the mechanisms under, underlying the, the, the causal pathways by, by which they play out. Um, so system science is, you know, aims to provide us these set of tools to help us understand and reason about these systems 
And the central way to do it, that it does it is through dynamic models. These models will be running starting this morning, but which will accompany us throughout the week. And, and these models basically are ways of capturing these operationalized uh, theory or, or hypotheses about the world. Um, and they represent how things might work out there in the world so that we can more quickly spot errors in our thinking, so that we can share our thinking with others and open it up to, to, to collective refinement, and so that we can reason about its consistency with the evidence and evolve it. Um, so system science is often focused around, uh, around models, um, uh, dynamic models in particular. So the fundamental theses that I'm advancing here in this boot camp, the fundamental theses are that, number one, system science and data science are synergistic. They work together hand in glove very effectively. But that to accomplish their goals, the goals of system science, it needs data science. To accomplish the goals of data science, it needs system science to realize their full potential. To accomplish this aim of, of understanding the richness of underlying processes in the world that give rise to data, we need system science. For system science to build models that are responsive and that stay updated, et cetera, we need data science. So why is this? Well, system science needs data science to more quickly challenge and refine um, dynamic models. We build models that are tools for learning. And the way we learn, it's a humbling thing, but the way we learn is to challenge those models with data. If the model proves inadequate to characterize what we observe from the world, it's not a failure. Of, it shouldn't be so much regarded as a failure of the model, but a success of, of learning. Because often we wouldn't have realized this inconsistency between that theory and the world without a model to show us that it's inconsistent, model and data. So, so, so data science can help us challenge and refine these models more quickly, which basically means we can learn more quickly. Um, it can help ground the model in, in new evidence as it comes in, help it adapt to a changing situation. It can help us more effectively evaluate interventions, it turns out. One of the foremost goals of system science is to be forward-looking, to say, how do we change things for the better when we're dealing with these complex systems? How do we put in place, again, citing Jeff, fixes that stay fixed? And as such, it's focused on intervening. It's focused on changing things, changing the data generating process. And it turns out data science can help us assess the response of our system to intervention more quickly, learn more quickly from interventions, correct our models, and intervene more, more effectively. Um, it turns out data science also allows us to undertake a very powerful um, set of, of, of tools that can help us um, get direct insight into what's needed to capture and model structure by supporting something called state space reconstruction. And finally, and this is the subject of a lot of uh, back and forth between Jeff and, and Tam, who's here, and, and Wagdi, to transform models from discrete products which are frozen in time. We build this model, it captures knowledge from that time, and from then on we use it, but it grows increasingly disconnected with the world into constantly updated depiction of the world that stays current, stays fresh, can always be asked to look forward. Now, why does data science need system science? Well, to capture theory in the form of causal connections. Data science needs theory, it's my belief. Um, it's not that all things in data science need theory, far from it. There's room for caps and caps uh, capturing empirical regularities where there's no theory. But for, um, for explicating processes in the world, and reasoning about counterfactuals, and it needs, uh, needs theory. And system science provides a way of capturing that in the form of causal connections. Um, so data science needs to deal with the fact that there's complex dynamics in the world. Things take time to play out. We're, we're not just taking a static 
often we can't just take a static view of a situation of how is A related to B in some abstract way. It takes time for A to influence B, and over time B responds to changes in A. There's dynamics over time, change over time that takes place. And data science needs system science to really formulate it and grapple with that. Um, uh, data science also um, is, is not just about turning on a spigot in some disconnected way and letting, letting uh, you know, data that's, uh, just flow in in some, some fashion that's uh, quite passive. Often it requires us to collect data. And what data we collect and how, how finely we collect it can be informed by system science. Um, uh, data science can illuminate underlying uh, mechanisms when connected with system science, can identify causal connections, and communicate uh, effective explanations. Um, so these are high level points that I'm going to be coming back to. I'm articulating them now, and I'm going to articulate them at the end of the boot camp with lots of examples that have pointed to them. But the picture here is a radical one. The picture is that these techniques taught separately are best applied together for large numbers of different types of challenges and questions. The challenge this week in conveying this is going to be the diversity of material and backgrounds in the room. Um, uh, many will need to be exposed to system science essentials starting in minutes. Others are very unfamiliar with, with um, uh, elements of, of data science and will need to be attuned to what is meant by big data and some of these machine, machine learning approaches. Many people have neither uh, of these. And I'm going to ask your accommodation for needing to address these different needs. There are going to be times where I am going to engage in, in uh, technically uh, rich muttering. Um, and I'm going to ask for those who are uninterested in that to excuse my, um, uh, my geekiness. Um, well, I have to ask that all the time, right? <laughs> But um, there's going to be other times where I'm going to be trying to address something predominantly at a, at a higher or philosophical level to communicate a very important point, and I won't be down in the details of the, of the algorithms and so on. And um, I'm going to have to ask people to have patience with that. I'm dealing here with people of very different needs sometimes, and the questions I expect to be of very different sorts. I welcome questions at any of these levels. Because the truth is that, that even some of the best practitioners in the data science area, system science area, are going to be completely naive with respect to the other area. And this is our chance to try to articulate some basics in each of these areas that will help an understanding of how they come together. So I'll ask your accommodation in the course of the boot camp. Um, uh, about these elements. So, a lot there in the um, orientation and resources. Um, uh, any questions about the boot camp before we dive into a model? Get that blood going. No? Questions I can answer? Needs I can address? Okay, it's a it's a silent, silent crowd. Um, uh, that's okay. I, I know I'm a strange beast to watch. So, um, we'll, uh, uh, we'll, 